I'm doing YouTube full time. Um, no BS, no joking around here. Yeah, I have really left university. He will be pushing trolleys and Morrisons in a few weeks. Some called fans like Adam Pearson need to stop stalking our players. Hope the Bruno deal falls through so this nonce cries after spending 3 months worth of YouTube money on a player that doesn't sign. Surely only a matter of time before they up the security around the training ground. Adam P, he's up a tree. It's not. It's not unmatched. I tell you what's unmatched. When I was his age, I was working in an engineering shop doing 20 hour shifts every day. That's work rate unmatched. A proper job. You know, I'm sick of seeing not just Amanda Stavely, but people that I'm connected with, my friends, getting abuse for being successful. You know, Adam Pearson, people wishing him dead or stuff like that just because he's been successful doing something he loves. He's 20 years old, right? 20 years old and he's getting abuse from grown adults. It's pathetic. Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. I apologise by the way for that over the top intro. Yeah, I know. But I feel like it gets the message across quite well. Eight months ago it was now. Eight months ago I decided to walk away from university because I wanted to watch the, the main team, the women's team on a weekly basis. I just want to support Newcastle. Eat, sleep, breathe Newcastle. That's all I ever wanted to do. When I was at uni, I never had a direction. I never had a plan. I just, I don't know. I was just doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff. I never had a any sense of a future. But it's because of you guys I had the opportunity where I could actually walk away and do some what I wanted to do. So yeah, I owe you all everything I have. But not everything is good. Um, now, first thing I want to say immediately is that I'm not trying to be a victim here. Every single content creator will get abuse no matter what. I'm not flawless. I've made a lot of mistakes during my time on YouTube and I'm going to make plenty more. That's just life. It's about learning from those mistakes and becoming a better person. But yeah, uh, long story short there, is I'm, I'm just doing this video for a laugh. There's nothing else to it. Uh, there's nothing else going on today with Newcastle. So I thought, why not? Let's look at the worst comments I have received over the last eight months on YouTube. And as you saw from the tomb of you and that little short snippet in the intro that I've even had death threats as well. So yeah, things can get quite toxic. But anyway though guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to head down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed the video as well. Finally, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section, which comment do you think is the worst I've ever received on my channel. But anyway though, enough about that, without further ado, let's have a look at some of those comments. Let's begin off by talking about the Newcastle United training ground. I mean, to say I don't get abuse from the training ground would be the biggest lie ever. <laughs> I get slaughtered for going to the training ground sometimes, but I want to make it clear straight away that obviously the club knows who I am and they do not have a problem with me going to the training ground. I only go there mainly when signs come in or big events, for example, when Eddie Howe got appointed. I only go there for big events and when transfers come in for the medicals. So, yeah, as a heads up there, I don't go there every single day. That is a massive, uh, a massive misconception that seems to go around the internet, but... Believe it or not, uh, six months ago, there was actually a Reddit page just dedicated to me being outside the training ground. There was like 30 people on there having a full-on debate of whether it's right or wrong that I stand outside. Which, I mean, uh, I think it's more embarrassing than standing outside the training ground, to be honest, in itself. But yeah, let's have a look at some of those comments now. Let's talk about this Andy guy here. Look at the size of that comment. I can't even read it all out. It's about six paragraphs long. I mean, he's calling me arrogant, antagonistic. I mean, what's he going on about? I am not these things at all. And on top of that, he starts putting in these calculations. He's getting his, his mass books out. He's getting his calculators out. He's, oh, you might as well get your protractor and your ruler out while you're at it and try and add up some percentages. And I love it as well how he finishes off by the saying, in short, he's annoying. Well, you could have just said that in the first place and save yourself about half an hour. Just typing out paragraphs about how much of a horrible person I am. <laughs> I mean, I don't get this. What was the point of this comment? It makes no sense. Why is it about six paragraphs long? We don't get anything better to do. Honestly, you call me pathetic for standing outside the training ground. That's even worse. Why are you so invested in me standing outside your training ground? I'm not your family member. I'm not your pal. I mean, what 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 is the to this? There's nothing to this. And we've got this reply here from Mr. T Maddox. And he's coming out saying, oh, I'm only doing it for my personal gain. If I really cared about the players, I wouldn't be there. I mean, for personal gain, it's not like I'm a Newcastle fan. You know, I'm definitely not going there because I love supporting Newcastle. And I'm invested in seeing what the team actually does. No, it's just because I want the money. I mean, what a pile of garbage this is again. Talking utter crap on these Reddit pages. 
Well, I'm going there just because I want to make money. Well, no, I'm going there because I care about Newcastle. I want to see the signs come to the training ground. I want to actually see the players interacting with fans. We've got another comment here saying that we need to up the security at the training ground. Why? Because I'm standing outside the training ground. I can just imagine a man that's still be on the phone. Hello? Oh, what's that? Eddie is Adam Pearson outside the training ground. That's it. Get me an R2 security guard now. Stand outside the training ground. Reinforce the gates. Get the ball way out. Keep him out. I mean, what? He's acting like I'm, I don't know, like some sort of deviant just trying to sneak in the grounds. <laughs> I stand there and I record the players coming out. That's all I do. They're acting like I've got a step ladder and I'm trying to hop over the fence or something. I mean, why are you trying to make me sound incriminating? Like, what I do is, is legally allowed. It's public land outside the training ground. As, as I said before, the, the club has no problem with me being there. So, I mean, yeah, sure, let's get some more security guards in. This one's definitely the worst one I've seen regarding the training ground because this person on Twitter has actually went out of his way to try and make me look as bad as possible. Singling me out in a post and saying that, well, because of people like me, players could be scared from joining the club. So, you know, our potential signs might not join the club because of me. So, uh, that's a heads up for you there. As well as that upsetting current players. You know, Isaac Hayden, he went to Norwich because I was standing outside the training ground. That's a story nobody's taught you guys. What a pile of crap. Every single one of these are just rubbish. This one's slanderous because he's, he's saying that I'm the reason why certain things are happening. He's saying I'm starting the players and harassing the players. It's completely infactual. There's no evidence to back this up. All I do is stand outside the training ground and he's saying I take things to the next level, which, of course, are not true. Next up is my personal favourite, by the way. The ones who have never made YouTube videos in their life, who think they know the website inside out. They know exactly how much money I'm making. They love putting these little statistics and analytics up on the screen. They love telling people how much of a bad choice I made and just love trying to bring me down. So yeah, uh, let's have a look at some of these ones now. We'll look at this one first. So this guy's actually slagging me off for going in hotels and booking hospitality tickets. I'm not even allowed to go in a hotel anymore. I've got to get a coach like everyone else. I've got to... Being your way on like everyone else, I'm not allowed to do these certain things. I'm not allowed to go in a hotel. I don't get why people get so triggered by that. I go in the hotels because I think overnight stay of logs are quite entertaining because people can actually see what it's like staying in a particular area. And as well as that, it's easier for me to stay a couple of nights so I can get videos sorted. I can just relax video. I don't like going down the coach. I think the train's a lot smoother. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a life choice. I mean, well, why am I not allowed to do that? Yes, it costs more money, but... I mean, it's my choice. Ultimately, it's my money to spend. So I don't get how you can criticise you for that. That was quite a strange one. So we've got a little comment section here. A group of lads are having a conversation. All them are ordering me. But one's even got a kid hasn't seen the picture. They're all them slagging me off, saying that I'm only earning £60 a month. I mean, I, I definitely went full-time in £60 a month. I mean, any YouTuber looking at that little post there must be laughing at themselves because I haven't got a clue how YouTube works. I mean, subscribers is not how you earn revenue. It's based on... Your viewing figures, how many people watch your videos, returning viewers. I mean, there's so many different factors. Subscribers is actually quite small when it comes to earning revenue. So, yeah, talk out the arse there. Slagging off how I talk. I've seen these little personal digs. And these three especially as well. These three do it all the time about me. Just bullying. It's, it's bullying the amount of times you do it. So, I mean, cute little lads. You only benefit me by giving me this attention. So, cheers for that. And finally, this one here is another really bad one because, once again, it's somebody going out of their way to try and make me look bad and somebody trying to encourage all people to hate me by putting these public posts and just screenshotting all sorts and just putting on these little snarty comments. So we've got this guy here saying that I'm trying to be the next true Geordie, that I'm never, ever going to be the next true Geordie. I mean, well, for one, the guy is a millionaire. He has millions of subscribers, so the fact he even put me in the same sentence to him means I'm doing something correct. I don't have to be next true jury, but why have I got to be next true jury? Why can't I be the, the first Adam P as uh, egotistical that me itself? Why don't I need to be next true jury? I don't have to be next true jury. I can just do my thing with Newcastle and be happy with myself. Why have I got to try and be the next Brian? And finally, we'll finish off with this lovely one from a Sunderland fan. Yeah, so pretty much he's called me a nonce and he's just saying how I wasted all my YouTube money buying the Bruno top three days before he signed. Well, first off, considering you're a Sunderland fan, I imagine you know exactly what a nonce is, so that doesn't look too good for me, does it? But yeah, uh, you can call me a nonce as much as you want, I, I don't care. And as well as that, Bruno eventually signed on the day as well when Bolton beat Sun in 6 0, so <laughs> that one's a nice slap my words. I can't see you, where you're too busy drowning in the mud, where are you? I can't see you anywhere, so yeah. I completely bodied him on Twitter when that happened, and I put these people in their place whenever they try and slag me off, but. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I guess the moral of the video is that if you make a YouTube channel, you will get abuse. You have to accept that no matter who you are, what you do and how you portray yourself, you will get people out there that will try and put you down. 
And if you learn how to laugh in their face and learn how, even though it's negative comments, these comments still benefit you because they promote you more. You just got to learn to accept it and just accept it for what it is and just laugh them off. Um, I'm not going to lie, when I first got this sort of abuse, it did hit quite hard, but once you get used to it, it it's all right, really. Death threats won't be tolerated in any capacity, and as I have done in the past, I will continue to stamp them out, so that's a massive no-no. But, it's just how it is. Um, I've made this video because I think the Castle fans just need something to laugh at the minute, because the club's quite stagnate with the signs, they're taking things quite slowly, players are still on holiday, there's not much going on with Newcastle at the minute, so I thought, why not, let's get a video out there where people could smile and people can actually enjoy themselves. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed watching. This video is just a joke, don't take anything seriously. And if you're also saying that the people that are slagged me off in this video, don't slag them off. It's not a point in this video, don't send any hate over to anyone in this video. I only made this video because I want to defend myself. Obviously these comments over the last eight months and uh, I've got every right to reply. These All these are public comments directed towards me. I have every right to mention in my video and talk about them, of course I do. But anyway guys, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.